Hello, I'm Mayor Bill Carpenter. Over the next few months, my office will be producing a series of ESL classes that specialize in helping Brockton residents acquire English skills to increase employment opportunities. This class is called English for Employment. This represents an unprecedented partnership between the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board, CareerWorks, the Brockton Public Schools, Brockton Community Access, and the Mayor's Office. We hope you find this series useful as we continue our mission to bring vital services to the residents of the City of Brockton. So today we're going to talk about two aspects of talking on the phone, depending on the time we have. We're going to talk about leaving a message. We're going to talk about speaking with a receptionist. And I have a question for you. On your cell phones or on your phones at home, if I call you and you're not home, what will I hear on your phone? What, if you're not home, I call, it rings three or four times and some, something answers. Is it your voice or is it your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging service? <laughs> That's what a lot of people leave. But if you're looking for a job, it's a great idea to have your own voice on your voicemail. An employer would like to hear you speak. Hi, you've reached the voicemail of Jean Ballon. I'm not available right now. Please leave your number and name and I'll call you back. It sounds much more professional. And also the employer knows they got the right person. Right, if you call a cell phone and it says, your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging service, I don't know if that's the right person or not. I don't know whose cell phone I called. So if we have time today, uh, we might do a little recording on our phones. If not today, maybe we can do it next week. But first, we're going to talk about calling and finding out about a job. So please take one of these. I'll pass that down to Junior. What? Allergy season, huh? <laughs> Did I have enough for Claire too? Ah, good. And we'll save one for Ilna. And Ilna's the only person missing today. Okay, as we always do, because I want everybody to speak clearly and get as much pronunciation and fluency practice as possible, let's read it together. All right? Remember good, clear sounds, final consonant sounds and move your mouth like an English speaker. We tend to open our mouths a little bit more widely than in other languages. So let's do it together, ready? Culture notes. Culture notes. Tips for telephoning. Tips for telephoning. Anyone know what tips are? Somebody says, I'm going to give you a tip. What do we? That's what we always think of, don't we? When you take a taxi or if you're at a restaurant, you leave a tip. Well, did you know that in English, tips has double meaning, it has another meaning. A tip can also mean advice. So someone might say to you, um, do you have any tips for me? I'm going to go on a job interview. Do you have any tips for me? And don't be confused and give them money. <laughs> They're asking you, do you have any advice? Advice, right. So tips in this context, tips for telephoning, means advice for using the telephone. Many, many words in English have more than one meaning. And it can be quite confusing if you are a, a second language learner and you've only heard that one meaning. So tips here means advice for using the telephone. Let's read together. When you are looking for a job, when you are looking for a job, sometimes you need to use the telephone. Sometimes you need to use the telephone. 
When you find out about a job, you should call as soon as possible. It is important to know how to leave a good telephone message. I want to stop for one moment and talk about that call as soon as possible. Have you seen people say this or write this before? Have you seen that? Yes, okay. I've seen that. As soon as, as, soon as, as soon as possible, right. Sometimes people will say, call me ASAP. Okay. Say, ASAP, what's that? That means as soon as possible. And that's so important because sometimes people will say, oh, I heard about a job. I'm going to call tomorrow. I'm busy today. I'll call tomorrow. Or I'll call next week. But we have a saying in English. The early bird catches the worm. Have you heard that expression? Is there a similar one in your language? Yes, 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 yes. What does it mean? The early bird catches the worm. Here's the first. The first will come in. Yeah. The first will gonna serve. First one in the Exactly. It's like first come, first serve. Birds that wake up early in the morning, when the grass is wet, they get all the worms. The birds that sleep in and wait. Well, then the sun comes up and the worms go back yeah, under the ground. Like no food. <laughs> so, you want to be an early bird. You want to be one of the first people who call about that job. Because you don't want to call two days later and they say, I'm sorry, we've already filled that position. So it's very important when you hear about a job opening to call right away. Call as soon as possible, ASAP. <laughs> Questions? All right, let's continue. <clears throat> Here are some things to remember. Here are some things to remember. Okay, I know it's Friday morning and everybody's tired. <laughs> All right, loud and proud. Here are some things to remember. Here are some things to remember. About using the telephone. About using the telephone. Oh, that sounded much better. <laughs> Before you make a telephone call. Before you make it a Prepare and practice what you will say. Prepare and practice what you will say. That's so important. Just like at an interview. Before you make your call, sit down and practice saying what you're going to say. And we're going to do that today. We're going to put a, leave a message. Next, you can write down what you want to say. You can write down what you want to say. And read it on the phone. And read it on the phone. The receptionist and the manager can't see you. The receptionist and the manager can't see you. So it's an advantage, right? You can be really nervous on the phone. But they can't see you. They don't know you're nervous. <laughs> you can make a speech on the phone. You can read it like Barack Obama. And they're not going to know. Now, they will know if you read like this, they will know. So that's why practicing is important. You have to say, hi, my name is. And the more you practice, the more fluently you'll Be speak. Be natural. Be natural. That's the whole thing. Next point. When you can't talk to the person you are calling, when you can't talk to the person you are calling, don't hang up. Don't hang up. Always leave a message. Always leave a message. All right, be honest. How many of you have made a phone call and when the voicemail comes on, you go and hang up the phone? <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> Matt, too. I make it a lot. We all do, right? We, we chicken out. We turn chicken and we say, ah, I don't want to leave a message in English. <laughs> Now we know we don't have to do it again. Not going to do it. You're going to leave a message, a very fluent, very intelligent, very, very business-like message, and very short, exactly. Next point is exactly what Woodley said. Leave a short message. Leave a short message. You don't want to have a whole job interview on the, on the answering machine or on the voicemail. And remember that a manager can be a man or a woman. Remember that the manager can be a man or a woman. If you are not sure, if you are not sure, 
Ask the receptionist. Ask the receptionist. Is that Mr. or Ms.? Is that Mr. or Ms.? Now, sometimes on the job posting, it will say the person to contact is Pat Smith. So when you call, you're going to ask for Pat Smith. But we don't know. Uh, if the receptionist says to you, okay, when you call back, you're going to want to speak with Pat Smith. Yeah, no, Pat. Pat could be Patrick, right? Patricio, Patrice, Patricia, <laughs> Pasha. Pasha, right? Anything it could be a man or a woman. So don't be afraid to ask. Is that Mr. Smith or Ms. Smith? Let's practice. Is that Mr. Smith? Is that Mr. Smith or Ms. Smith? Oh, Ms. Smith. And remember, last week or two weeks ago, we talked about Ms. Ms. Yes. That's the, the salutation we use when we're not sure if the person is married, single, divorced, widowed. That's always a good, a good uh, title to use, Ms. Mr. Everybody's the same. Men, men have been using Mr. for years. Questions so far? Junior? In this case, we have to ask if we have to ask the receptionist if the manager is a man or a woman. Only, well, only if you want to call what back. What I want to say, what I want oh, to sure. say, what do you think if the person say, ask for Pat Smith, and we don't ask, and next time we just ask for Pat Smith, even though, in that case, we're not going to put either, either Miss or either Mr. Right. When you call back, you can't just say, may I speak with Pat Smith? Is that you wouldn't impolite? need to ask. No, it's not impolite. The thing that does make a difference is in, um, if they say send a cover letter, or can you just send your resume, then no. on your cover letter you, have to, you can't say, dear Pat Smith. You have to say either, dear Mr. Smith, remember when we wrote our cover letter, or dear Ms. Smith. So that's when it becomes important. When you're on the phone, not so much, because you can always say, may I speak with Pat Smith? Um, but if they say, well, could you send a resume? Then you have to send a cover letter, too. Mm -hmm. Then you have to know, because if Pat Smith is Patricia, and you say, dear Mr. Smith, Patricia is not going to like that very much. <laughs> so we want to be polite. So don't be afraid to ask. If you're just calling back, it's not as important. You should say, may I speak with Pat Smith? And then if Pat Smith says, oh, then you know it's, it's a man. <laughs> Maybe, sometimes. But that's a good question. All right, the last section. Let's read it together. When you are talking on the telephone, when you are talking on the telephone speak slowly and clearly. Speak slowly and clearly. You want to speak more slowly and more clearly than you would speaking face to face. Because phone connections can be difficult to hear especially cell phones. Cell phones are notorious for bad reception. Signals. Yeah, no signal, no. And sometimes it'll cut in and out. So you want to be sure that you speak very slowly and very clearly. Next, be confident. Be confident. Don't speak very softly. Don't, Don't speak, speak very, very softly. softly. Don't sound nervous. Don't, Don't sound nervous. That's easy to say, right? Don't sound nervous. <laughs> How can, <laughs> it's almost impossible. But again, with practice comes confidence. So if you have your, your message written down and you know what you want to say and you've practiced, you'll sound less nervous than if you're trying to think it up as you're going along. So far, so good. Claire knows. Claire had a, a <laughs> she had a phone interview and a face-to-face -face interview last week. Yeah. So, and, boy. And for the day, I, I was in the office by myself. Oh. <laughs> I called to call and I put my, uh, my resume, the question, you remember? I remember. My question on all of me, and I talked to her. Good for you. Good job. Good job. Nobody, me and the phone, the door was closed. 
And obviously you did a wonderful job because they hired you. Yeah. So and, and see it. So to being prepared is the key. Preparation is the key. She had her into her resume in front of her to answer any questions. Um, and so you were probably still a little nervous, huh? Because she didn't know she was going to have a phone interview. She was going there for a regular interview face to face. And there was a misunderstanding, and the person who was supposed to interview her wasn't there. So she called on the phone. So Claire, you get the prize for bravery <laughs> in this class. Yes, I'm yeah, you think so? That is not easy. <laughs> Excellent. And she got the job. They were obviously very impressed. So preparation is the key. Let's look at the next point, the next bullet point. Be friendly and enthusiastic. Be friendly and enthusiastic. Put a smile in your voice. Put a smile in your voice. How would you do that? How would you put a smile in your voice on the phone? <laughs> Claire must have done that. <laughs> well, let me give you an example. If I'm sitting, I don't have my chair here. I'm going to pretend I have my chair here. I'm sitting here and I'm on the phone. And I'm just talking on the phone, waiting, and hi, I'm calling about the interview. I'm calling about the position you have open. Um, I'd like to apply for that position. Am I going to make a good impression? No. 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 So what should I do as I'm speaking, Philomena? To be active and uh, very happy. <laughs> Yeah, like you pretend you're talking to a real person instead of just sitting on the phone. Take your phone and pretend you're having a conversation. Hi, my name is Philomena Fonts. <laughs> um, I understand you have an opening for a certified nursing assistant, and I'd like to apply for that position. Does that sound better than, hi, my name is Lenore Cardoza. Um, I want to apply for that job. So... <laughs> Um, not to a voicemail, because it can't answer you. It can't, a lot of people do that. We know when somebody calls and says, is this Lenore Cardoza, how are you today? Mm -hmm. I know they're going to sell me something. They want me to buy something or donate money. Nobody says, how are you today? <laughs> Unless they're going to ask you for money. So go right to the point on your voicemail. Because um, a voicemail can't say, I'm fine. So you don't want to ask a machine, how are you today? You're going to say, just go right to your point, and we'll practice. I'll show you how to, how to really make a good voice message. But to put a smile in your voice, talk as though you're talking to a real person. You know, move around, move your hands, because that will come across in your voice message. People will hear that enthusiasm in your voice. Okay, next. This is very important, because when we're nervous, sometimes we don't do this. Listen carefully. Listen to what someone tells you, to what someone tells you or, asks you. or asks you. Sometimes we're so nervous about speaking another language, we're thinking about what we're going to say next instead of listening to what the person is saying to us. So if they say, can you come in next Tuesday for an interview? We might be thinking, oh, what, what did they just say? Oh, oh. Uh, what? <laughs> So listen very carefully. Now, what happens if you didn't understand what they said? Could you please repeat that? Or remember when we watched the interview videos? How would you ask politely for someone to repeat something? Please, could you please repeat that more slowly? Sure. Remember, ah, good, Junior remembered. I beg your pardon. Remember from our interview videos? As long as you ask politely. You know, sometimes people get nervous and they'll say, what, what, what? I didn't understand, what? That makes a very bad impression. You want to always be polite, businesslike, and courteous. So could you please repeat that? Or could you please speak more slowly? You can always use the excuse, I have a, I have a bad cell phone connection. Or we can do that too, to ask. Someone to ask slowly for you? Sure. Sure. Because they'll understand that this is, number one, you're on the telephone. And usually cell phones are difficult to hear. Mm -hmm. 
And number two, they're going to hear that you have an accent. They're going to know that English is not your first language. Okay. So don't worry about that. That's an advantage. Remember, that's an advantage in this, in this city. Um, my I took my class on a field trip uh, on Monday. No, on Wednesday. Um, it was an interesting field trip. We went to the Brockton Trial Court, and we were talking with the court officer, and he talked about people who work in the courts as court interpreters. And he said to the students, your second language or your third language is an advantage. He said, we need people who speak more than one language. So when you call on the phone and they hear that you have an accent, they're not necessarily going to think a bad thing. They're going to think, oh, this is somebody who speaks more than one language. So don't be afraid to say, could you speak more slowly? Or could you please repeat that? Um, and people all say it all the time. I'm on a cell phone. I have kind of a bad cell phone connection. <laughs> you can use that as your excuse. But always listen carefully. If you're at home, grab a piece of paper and a pencil and write down some of the things that they say. If they say, are you available on Tuesday, May 23rd for an interview? Write down on your paper, Tuesday, May 23rd, so that you'll remember. Because sometimes when we're nervous, we forget. We hang up and we say, whew, what did they say? <laughs> Has that ever happened? That's happened to me. <laughs> I was so nervous. And I say, oh, I made it through the phone call. <gasps> was it Tuesday or Thursday I was supposed to go? <laughs> what time was it? What was the date? Was it 23 or 25? So if you can, if you're at home, near a phone, it's confusing. So have a piece of paper ready. And finally, the last point, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't talk when someone is talking to you. And that's just good advice in general, right? On the phone, in person, let the other person complete his or her thought and then ask your questions. All right, so far so good? <laughs> Let's move on to leaving a message on an answering machine or on voicemail. This is probably the toughest part, leaving message on voicemail. At least when we speak to a person, we get an answer. When we speak to a machine, we talk, and there's silence on the other end. So we have to keep talking. We can't stop and pause as though we're talking to a person. So let's read together. Leaving a message, Leaving a message. on an answering machine, on an answering machine. Or, voicemail. or voicemail. This part just explains what voicemail is. I think we all know what voicemail is. So let's skip down to the book part that says what to do. Ready? Number one, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Oh, loud and proud. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Good. Two, spell your last name. Spell your last name. Now, notice it says your last name. You don't have to spell your whole name because when they call you back, they'll say, May I speak with Ms. Fonts or Mr. Tessa? Number three, say what job you are looking for. Number four, tell how you found out about the job. Number five, say your telephone number. Say your telephone number. And say thank you. Say thank you. Now, does that sound like a short message? Uh, not so much, huh? <laughs> but it is. But it is. And we're going to do all of those things. So look at the next page. And we are going to write a voicemail message that we can leave when we speak to uh, at a company, when we don't speak to a manager, but we actually have to leave a message. This is on your own. Let's read together. You are calling about a job that you want. You are calling about a job that you want. So you can choose any job you want. Okay? You can be President of the United States if you want to, any, any job you want. You hear an answering machine or voicemail message. You hear an answering machine or voicemail message. What will you say? What will you say? Write the message you will leave. Write the message you will leave. So we're going to do that right now, and then we're going to practice. All right? So, first of all, we, and look how short it is, even though we have to do all those things. 
<laughs> so hello, this is, and you're going to write your first name and then your last name. So please do that right now. Remember, first and last name. You don't want to just say, hi, this is Maria, or hi, this is Joseph. First name and last name very clearly. Now, the next line says, that's, and after you say that's, you're going to spell your last name. Okay? You're going to spell your last name. Now, everybody in this room, well, some, let's see, we have some people from Cape Verde and some from Haiti. So, if I am Haitian, and I hear you spell or say a Haitian last name, I'm going to know how to spell that. If I am Cape Verdean and somebody calls and they spell a Haitian last name, I might have a little more difficulty because that's not a familiar name to me. So for English speakers, sometimes it's very difficult to understand when people say their names on the phone. We see this a lot at the adult learning center. Students will call and they'll pronounce their names, but they'll pronounce it with a French accent or a Portuguese accent. And if the secretary or the person who's answering the phone is not a Portuguese speaker or a French Creole speaker, it could be kind of difficult to figure out the spelling. So we're going to talk a little bit about the spelling of names. Let's put this aside for just a moment. And we're going to do a little experiment, OK? I am going to spell my name for you. I want you to pretend that you are a receptionist or a manager or a voicemail machine. <laughs> And I'm calling about a job, and I'm going to spell my last name, and I'd like you to write it down for me, okay? So just take a scrap piece of paper. Any, it doesn't have to be a, any piece of paper at all. You can even do it up here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I left you a message on a voicemail about a job, and you are the manager, and you're listening to my voicemail, and you're going to call me back. So I'm going to say, hello, this is Lenore Fershing. That's F-I-R-S-C-H-I-N-G. Now I want you to write down my name. Okay? I'll, I'll do it again. And I want you, when you hear me say my spelling my last name, I want you to write it down. Okay? Hi, my name is Lenore Fershing. That's F-I-R-S-C-H-I-N-G. Who got it? Who got the spelling of my last name? I don't see any hands. Okay, let me try. Okay. F R I C S I N G. Close. We say close, but no cigar. <laughs> you were close. F I R C S I N G. Close. Very close. And how would you pronounce that name if you were calling me back? You'd have to listen to the message again, though, wouldn't you, to hear me say it? It makes it kind of difficult. Did anyone else get my spelling? Yes. 